1970. You're listening to Retirement Journey with Justin Fort, where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom you need to live life your way all the way. And I'm Justin, and I'm here in studio with my sidekick, Jennifer. Good afternoon. Hey, Jennifer. You can call us live at 512-390-1370 or send us your questions and comments to ask at fortwm.com. We are really excited uh, to visit with Tom Hegna today. He's got a passion, a real passion for helping consumers. After traveling years uh, around the country, uh, training financial advisors, helping baby boomers retire effectively, Tom is here on the show to discuss his book, Don't Worry, Retire Happy. This is a rare opportunity to learn what financial advisors have known for years about taking control of your own retirement planning. You definitely going to want to stay tuned as Tom reveals innovative retirement planning concepts like hybrid retirement, so social security maximization, planning for long-term care, secure guaranteed lifetime income, and a lot more. So very excited to have Tom on. But, you know, I, I just wanted to relate a, a little family story. Last night, my son uh, lost his third tooth. Aww. And uh, I, I say lost, but really, he, he makes me pull them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Not something that I really look forward to doing. I don't want to hurt my children. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I'm not a dentist. <laughs> so exactly. I try to make sure that it's wiggling in enough so it looks like it's going to come out, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so anyways, he's really excited about having his teeth pulled. Even just as soon as it starts to wiggle, he wants me to pull it. And, I, you know, when I ask him why, he says, well, it's not because of the tooth fairy, because I really, I, I, I don't think there's a tooth fairy. <laughs> and I said, are you sure about that? He said, I'm pretty sure. I said, so then what is it? He says, well, I'm going to get money. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess our, our household tooth fairy is a uh, uh, daddy, uh, yeah, yeah, and mommy. <laughs> and uh, so he he gets he gets quite a bit. He gets five bucks. Wow, that's a lot. For that a tooth, is a lot. Right. So he's super excited. Mm -hmm. He knows what he can buy at Best Buy. He likes video games. He oh, likes awesome. books. So he can go to go and and spend his money on those kinds of things. <laughs> so we obviously, as a financial planner, I try to teach him things about. Uh, money and the importance oh, of it. He knows what I do and, you know, what we do in the office with our clients. And so uh, he's very focused on that. So uh, successfully pulled his tooth and, you know, it just uh, made me think a little bit more about how in this world we need, you know, dads and moms really important as we are needy, dependent people as mm -hmm. babies, as children. Uh, we can't perform what I would say, you know, call the activities of daily living, like they talk about with respect to long-term care, things of that nature, like eating, right? Bathing, right. transitioning, continence, all these things. Mm -hmm. We come into this world not being able to perform any of them, <laughs> right? That's true. And, you know, sometimes I wonder if my children have cognitive impairments <laughs> <just> because <laughs> they're jumping all over the place. They're, you know, they're not paying attention, but, you know, children are children. That's the way we are. But, you know, um, it's interesting to think about that in terms of how we transition in, in life as humans. And at some point we live long enough, you know, things may happen in life where we need that kind of support and that kind of help again from other people, but we're probably not going to have our dad there with us or our mom there with us. Correct. Um, so we need to make sure that we have a long-term care plan in place or we have loved ones around us or some kind of a social network that's going to help us get through that, that period of time when we just need help again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Hopefully won't, we won't need more teeth pulled, but that may, <laughs> may, be, may be the case. Um, so, you know, Father's Day is tomorrow. Hopefully I won't have to do any dishes tomorrow. Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and, and I think it's important to, for us to all recognize our fathers. And, you know, just thinking about that for a second uh, in, in terms of, you know, how that relates to financial planning, the retirement journey, you know, I could imagine that every one of you has heard some kind of advice about money from your father yes. and, and I still do. <laughs> and, and, and maybe some of it stuck and you know can you think of one thing Jennifer that kind of stuck for you oh my gosh he's always telling me be sure that you don't spend all your money because when you get older you're gonna need it so my my thing is my paychecks always go so I unfortunately some people live paycheck to paycheck and I think I, I'm headed there. <laughs> <laughs> no, we need to fix that, right? Yes. Uh, and so, I need to come see you. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, you know, and, and these, these words of wisdom that we get from our fathers, um, ho hopefully they're good words of wisdom and they stick with us. And, you know, when we're, when we're challenged in life, we, you know, sometimes we'll see, a, uh, I'll see a visual of my father. And, and one thing that my father always told me was, um, which I, I, little, I chuckle at a little bit now. He said, um, you know, kind of this gone with the wind type advice. <laughs> he's, you know, he's of a different generation, I suppose. Right. He, he, uh, he would always say, 
if you don't have land, you don't have anything. If you don't have, you know, property that you own, you're not really a man. I remember him saying that as wow. a, a young boy, and it stuck with me, mm-hmm. right? And so, uh, I guess to a certain extent, that's helped form, you know, form some of my opinions about ownership of things. And so maybe it's not land for me, but it's maybe owning things like business or investments, stocks, insurance products, things like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, but anyways, a shout out to our fathers. Uh, happy Father's yes, Day happy tomorrow. Happy Father's Day. Uh, thanks, Dad. Uh, for pulling your weight. And uh, anyways, Jennifer, can you tell us a little bit about our guest today? Oh, absolutely. Tom Hegna is president of TomHegna.com, author of Don't Worry, Retire Happy, Seven Steps to a Secure Retirement, and Paychecks and Playchecks. Served six years on active duty in the U.S. Army and another 16 and a half years in U.S. Army Reserve, retiring as a lieutenant colonel. He is a former first vice president of New York Life, has been featured in articles, excuse me, uh, the American College Wealth Channel magazine, Round the Table, the National Underwriter, um, and National Association of Insurance and Financial Advisors magazine. After 30 years in retirement industry, Tom will be airing his new public television special, Don't Worry, Retire Happy. And Tom resides in Arizona with his wife and four children. Welcome, Tom. How are you doing? Welcome. Hey, thank you, Justin and, and Jennifer. Great to be with you. We are so excited to have you. Yes. And just wanted to start off by uh, saying Happy Father's Day. Thank you for your service as a father and as, for your service to our country. Yeah, thank you. And Happy Father's Day to you as well. Well, uh, you know, so you've got this really interesting uh, television special coming up. Uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so it's already played in 40 million homes. It's going to be playing for the next two, two, two and a half years on public television. And it really came from, uh, I was doing a Paychecks and Playchecks, which is the first book I wrote. I was doing a presentation down in San Diego a few years ago, and somebody from public television was there. And they said, Tom, we need to take this message to the American people. They're not getting the right message on retirement, but we don't think they're going to understand Paychecks and Playchecks. We need a simpler title. And so I wrote another book, which is Don't Worry, Retire Happy, because I think everybody can understand that. Yeah, who can under, understand being happy, right? If you, don't, if you don't know what happiness is, I don't know that a financial planner or anyone else can show you that. Uh, well, Tom, we are, we're going to have to uh, uh, go to a break here. But when we get back, we're going to talk about how uh, you're helping people understand how they can retire without worries and be happy. We're going to talk about those seven steps, your book, and uh, a whole lot more. So stick with us. Again, this is Justin, Retirement Journey, Talk 1370. Talk 1370, you're listening to Retirement Journey with Justin Fort. You can call us live at 512-390-1370 or send us questions and comments to ask at fortwm.com. We're visiting with Tom Hegna, author of Don't Retire, uh, Don't Worry, Retire Happy. Of course, we want you to retire. Uh, Seven Steps to a Secure Retirement. And uh, we are wanting you to know how you can use these steps to take control of your retirement planning and, and your future Tom, before we went to break, you were talking about how uh, your television special really took off because of uh, some of the work that you were doing there in San Diego, and uh, you, you were asked to maybe simplify some things with a, with another book. The I guess the, this is almost like a sequel to the the paychecks and playchecks. Yeah, I mean it's a little broader. It it, it has seven uh, simple steps to retirement security. Um, and, you know, if you want, I could kind of just go through the seven steps and then we can dig into whichever ones you want to dig into. That would be great. Yeah. So, I mean, step one is you got to have a plan. You know, how do you know how to get somewhere if you don't have a plan? And part of that is working with a financial professional. I say retirement is not a do-it-yourself project. I use a financial professional. And you might say, why would I need one? Well, look, I don't stay up to date on every company's product and feature. Those things, as you know, change every other week. And so I need a financial professional to help me with those little eaches. 
Um, step two, you got to maximize your Social Security benefits, and I know you're an expert in that area. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we can spend as much or as little time on that, but it's the largest retirement asset most people have, and yet they spend more time planning their summer vacation than they do on how to maximize those benefits. And in the process, they cost themselves potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars. Oh, we see it all uh, the time. That's true. Yeah. Step three, you know, consider a hybrid retirement. Too many people are trying to retire too early. They haven't saved enough money. And I would rather see somebody work from 60 to 65 than from 75 to 95. And unfortunately, the latter is going to happen to too many people. And I, I give some tips in the book on how to avoid that. Um, step four is to protect your, your portfolio from inflation. As you know, inflation is like a virus that over time can decimate purchasing power. Step five is to secure more guaranteed lifetime income because when you really study retirement, your retirement is not about your assets. And, and, and we, we should spend some time here because um, this is a paradigm shift. You know, your whole life you've been taught you got to save this pile of money, and the bigger the pile of money, the better your retirement. And that's not true. The success of your retirement is all about income, and I would argue guaranteed lifetime income. Step number six, you got to have a plan for long-term care. I know you're another huge advocate for having a plan for long-term care. It's the one thing that most people forget about. They can wipe out their entire life's work. And a step, step number seven is use your home equity wisely because for many people, their house is still one of the biggest assets they have, and I give tips on how to do that. There's also a chapter in the book on uh, tips for late savers, tips for women, um, tips for the LGBT market. There's a whole chapter on these longevity credits, which is the secret sauce of guaranteed lifetime income, and then a chapter on the importance of life insurance in retirement because really the most efficient way to pass your wealth to your children, grandchildren, and charities is to leave them life insurance. I always tell, tell people, don't leave your kids any money. Don't leave your kids any money. Spend your money. Leave them life insurance because you can leave them so much more. So mm-hmm. that's really it's really the math and science behind a successful retirement. I mean, this has been studied by Dr. David Babel of Wharton and Dr. Moshe Malevsky of Toronto and Dr. Menachem Yari of Israel and Dr. Robert C. Merton, a Nobel Prize winner. This is the math and science. So this isn't somebody's opinion of how to retire. Love it. Love it. We are definitely going to delve into a number of these uh, steps here, Tom. And I think really, you know, as a financial planner, I deal with uh, with people day in and day out. And there's I, I would I would say that really there's confusion with with at least one or if not all of these steps that you just mentioned with just about everybody that comes in the office, irrespective yeah, I mean, of their, you because know, there's so much false information out there. And, you know, everybody's got their opinions and Susie's got her opinions and Dave's got his opinions. <laughs> Tommy's got the facts and I lay the facts out in the book. And love I always it. say facts speak louder than opinions. I love it. Oh, that, I yeah. It wasn't it. Uh, was it Ronald Reagan that said that facts are stubborn things? I yeah. Think, I think he did. I think you can. Yeah. So we want to know the facts. And, and I know our, our, our clients and, and uh, those of you listening out there want, want to know how you can take control of your retirement. And you want to know the reality of things rather than. Uh, you know, relying on someone's opinion that may not be a, a professional, may not have the designations, qualifications, or the research to back it, like a lot of these professors that, that Tom just spoke of. And if you're just tuning in, again, this is the retirement journey with Justin Fort, where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom. You need to live life your way all the way. You can call us live here at 512-390-1370 if you have a question for myself or, or uh, Tom Hegna. Feel free to do that. You can also send us questions to ask at fortwm.com. We'll make sure those questions are answered. And, you know, so Tom, uh, you know, working with a financial professional, I've got this study, and I'm sure you've seen the statistics in terms of how many people actually work with a financial professional. Um, There's a study here from Stanford. This was back in 2012. They said that fewer than one in five older Americans, 50 plus, have successfully created a retirement plan. And more than half of them haven't even attempted to calculate how much money they're going to need. And one in five Americans obtain investment advice from a professional financial advisor who's paid in fees or commissions. That leaves about four in five people out there that are relying on, uh, you know, neighbors, coworkers, or maybe just Google. Yeah, well, you know, one of the most interesting things is I've been doing this public television around the country and I get to go out and, and do some live events as well. 
is the people think that having a financial professional is expensive and that they got to pay a lot of money to see one. And, and that was what was shocking to me because, as you know, there are many financial professionals out there who, who do not charge fees up front. I mean, I don't, I don't know how your practice is, if you're a fee financial plan or not, but there are plenty of, of financial uh, professionals that don't charge up front to, to, to meet with you and, and to, to help you. Oh, right. And, and you know, we, so, we, so we are like that. People think it's just too expensive. Yeah, we, we, uh, I, I make a, a point that, you know, we, we do these seminars, people come to the seminars where uh, there's no fee or cost associated with the seminar, no obligation. We give them good information. We might do topics on Social Security or just Financial Planning 101. And then, folks, you know, you know, you can you can meet with us in the office there. Uh, and, and Tom, like you were saying, we we do free consultations at, at my office. I want to make sure that before I charge somebody, we know I know why I'm charging them for what what you know, what, what we're going to potentially be able to accomplish for them. And not just jump into, uh, hey, you know, we can help you, and I have nothing. I know nothing about you. I need to get to know the individuals that I work with, uh, and and know what it is that's concerning them, what kind of plan they have in place if they do have one, and and where they may be weak, what their what their options are, and then be able to build kind of a um, a, a basic idea of what we might be able to do, and then and then we can talk about costs and expenses, but. I, I promise everybody that, that comes in our office that visits with me that no matter what, and I think this is the best way to do it, um, you know, we're fee, we're fee only on the investment advisory side, and we do uh, uh, have an insurance agency where we can, you know, help people with long-term care, life insurance, and, and annuities. Uh, but we want to make sure that before we give, before I give any advice, I understand the situation, and I understand uh, what, what they're after, and, and ultimately, they're not going to be paying a fee until they know well in advance what that fee is and how much and what they're getting for that. And I think that's a fair deal. And, and I think most people out there, if they can work with somebody that does that um, across the country, uh, whoever it is, I think that that is the way, way to go. I also say that, you know, fees only matter in the absence of value. Um, you know, if I could retire on low fees, I guess low fees would do it for me. But I don't get to retire on low fees. What I get to retire on is where can I make the most lose the least after fees. And and that's the value that I think a, a good financial professional brings, that you can retire much more successfully with a financial advisor than you can without one. Uh, and I think the research is, is overwhelming, and I, I talk about that in the book as well. And Tom, we, we talk a lot about the second step, Social Security maximization. So I, I, I want to skip that uh, for today, but I want to delve into this hybrid retirement that you talked about. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so George Burns said, Retirement at age 65 is ridiculous. When I was 65, I still had pimples. In it. And George Burns was at the age 100. The whole point is that, you know, I said too many people are retiring too early. Forbes just did an article, and they said, you know, here all these people are retiring early, and they're all dropping dead. And one of the reasons they're dropping dead is they no longer have a purpose in their life. So what I talk about in the book is not only financially. I mean, it's important to, to work a few extra years because if you can if you can work three, four, five years extra, you have a 50% chance or it can increase the success of your retirement by up to 50%. But also brain scientists say how important it is to stay engaged socially uh, with people and that if, that if you lose your purpose in life, um, you know, you, 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 you may not live as long as if you have a purpose in your life. So even if it's volunteer work with your church or your favorite charity or children's organizations, but if you can work a few extra years for pay, it can increase your earnings, increase your savings, and increase your Social Security benefits. Absolutely, absolutely agree with that, and and that may be something that that a lot of people can do, uh, and that may be something that you 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 can do. You know, if you're thinking about uh, how how to to generate the kind of income that you need to to live on, and 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 still be able to grow those assets that you've got, protect them for the longer term future, as much as possible. Design a plan that that works for yourself, but not be stressed out having to work full time. Basically, Tom, what you're telling everyone out there is that you can actually work part-time at something that you may have always wanted to do, something you enjoy, and take money from retirement assets. So kind of this hybrid retirement idea could, could potentially work. I, I always say in my seminars, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to be a marshal on a golf course two days a week. You know why? <laughs> because I get to play golf for free the other five days a week so it can reduce your expenses as well. Do something you love, right? Something low stress. And uh, Tom, yeah. when we get back from this break, we're going to talk about protecting portfolios from inflation, guaranteed lifetime income, 
long-term care, home equity. Do we do a reverse mortgage or not? How do we use that, that wisely? So when we get back, we're going to talk more about that. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that. Be right back. This is Justin Fort, Retirement Journey, Talk 1370. Talk 1370, you're listening to Retirement Journey with Justin Fort. You can call us live at 512-390-1370 or send us emails to ask at fortwm.com. We're visiting with uh, Tom Hegna, author of Don't Worry, Retire Happy, Seven Steps to a Secure Retirement. And we're talking about uh, the steps that you can take to plan for your retirement, be happy, low stress. We're on step four now, which is inflation. So let's talk about that. Okay, so... A guy comes in for an appointment. He's clearly worried. It has finally sunk in that the inflation, excuse me, is going to be a legitimate consideration over the course of his upcoming, what, 20, 30 or more years in retirement. What do you tell him? Well, look, I say you've got to optimize your portfolio to protect yourself against inflation. Now, I personally don't believe we're going to have significant inflation but I, it doesn't matter what I think. I'm I'm protecting my portfolio from inflation. So what are things that can help protect against inflation? Mutual funds, stocks, uh, managed money, uh, some commodities. Real estate traditionally has been a very good hedge against inflation. But what I also tell people is you can hedge against inflation without using any risk products. If you got somebody who doesn't want any risk, um, you need to know I've already bought guaranteed lifetime income that will kick in when I turn age 60. But I bought even more that will kick in when I turn 65. I bought even more that's going to kick in when I turn 70. I bought even more that's going to kick in when I turn 75. So I bought guaranteed lifetime income in a ladder to ensure that I've got increasing income for the rest of my life. And I did that with guaranteed products. So whether you want to use you know, the traditional stocks and commodities and real estate or you want to uh, use laddered uh, lifetime income or inflation-protected lifetime income, I, I say I really don't care, but you got to have a plan to protect yourself against inflation. Absolutely, I, I, I love what you said uh, there because you know not everybody's the same. Uh, it, uh, people I meet with, they have different risk tolerances, and if you want to have a, a guaranteed for sure retirement, and you're, you're going to be looking through insurance companies or pensions or things like that, and it sounds like Tom, you set up uh, for yourself a uh, an income ladder strategy, which is uh, pretty cool. And you know, one of the things. Uh, that I talk about with people when they talk about inflation is, you know, sure, if you if you need to have $70,000 a year income coming in every year, you might want that to be adjusted for some number. Maybe it's 3% or 4%, people will say when I ask them. And that's, that's fine. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, people will say, well, I've got to have my money in stocks to be able to do that. Well, let's just say, Tom, kind of like with your example there, if that income started at 100,000 and then there was an additional $10,000 a year on top of that every, you know, 5 or 10 years thereafter and we're using things like pensions, social security and annuity products to be able to do that. There's no real need for for using risk risk type products is what you're saying and 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 I I agree with you. Yeah, see, I've kind of figured this out that my retirement is all about my income, it's not about my assets. And I talk a lot about, and I, I didn't even mention the chapter in there on the happy factor and how to be happy in retirement. And I always tell people, you'll never be happy in retirement if you're worried about your assets because you're worried about the markets and interest rates and ISIS and oil prices. You'll never be happy if, you're, if your retirement is all about your assets. What gives you happiness in retirement is guaranteed lifetime income. And if you would just take a portion of your portfolio and put it into guaranteed lifetime income, then you start getting checks every month. And when you get a check, guess what you can do? You can spend it because guess what happens next month? You get another check, you can spend it. Because guess what happens next month? You get another check, you can spend it. And this spending of money allows you to actually enjoy your retirement. And if all you're worried about is your assets, you can't ever be happy because you don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know what your rates are going to be. You don't know how much you can withdraw safely. And so you'll never be happy. And so, you know, that, that, that step five on secure, more guaranteed lifetime income, it's not just for the ultimate success retirement, which it is, but it's also for your happiness in retirement and being able to enjoy it. So I really don't care what the market does anymore. I've got some money in the market, but not that's not what my retirement's about. My retirement's all about income, and 100% of my new purchases are going into 
future income products, guaranteed lifetime income products. If this tracks a chord with you and you want to, to, to see how you can achieve the kind of retirement that you want to be happy, to be stress-free, without risk, like Tom's talking about, you can visit with us by giving us a call at 512-433-6492. We, we do put together plans like this. We put together plans the way you want your money to be invested and, the, and for the retirement that you want. And you can achieve uh, you know, the retirement that you want according to what, what Tom's been, uh, been t- explaining to us here. And if you're just tuning in, again, this is Retirement Journey with Justin Fort, where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom you need to live life your way all the way. And we want you to be able to do that. That's why we're, we're talking about the seven steps that you can take to take, to take control of your retirement and, 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 your, and the destiny uh, that, that, will, that will lead you. And, and, and Tom, as, as we're talking about guaranteed lifetime income now, uh, step five uh, in, your, in your book, really when I, when I explain to folks that, that want... Um, want to have a, a, a maybe a more substantial portion of their uh, their their assets generating that kind of in- income. Really, what we're looking at is the difference between an asset pool and income, right? And and really, either one is a source of power. In my in my opinion, it's it, what what way do you want that power to come back to you? Do you want to? Uh, have that coming every year, and and you can divert that power back into investments. That's one option. You could divert that income or that power uh, into your your children or grandchildren while you're alive. You can gift money today if you have the income and you know that you're not going to run out of it. Versus stockpiling on the asset side, which I, I've seen a lot of people doing, well beyond really what they need to generate the income they want, but but they're just so afraid of these market concerns and the inflation rates and things of that nature that they have so much there that they're not gifting what they could be gifting every year or taking those trips that they could be taking and having that stress-free retirement that they could have. And that's really, as, as financial planners, that's really what we want um, our clients, of course, uh, right, Tom, to be able to achieve. Yeah, they're, they're living what I call a just-in-case retirement. And, and we all know people like this. They're in their 60s, their 70s. They've got plenty of money, but they don't touch it. And I'd always ask them, I'd say, wait a minute, you said you, when you retired, you're going to join the country club, you're going to buy a new boat, you're going to go on a cruise, you're going to see the world. Have you done that yet? And they say, no, we haven't done that yet. And I say, why not? And they say, well, just in case, it's a bad world out there. There's, there's The stock market could crash. Interest rates are low. Oil prices are crashing. There's ISIS, just in case, just in case. And, and then the back of their minds, they think they got to leave some money. They're kids, so, so they deny themselves a retirement. And and here's what it looks like. They don't touch their money, and they don't touch their money, and they don't touch their money, and they don't touch their money. Then they die. What happens to money? Goes to the kids. What do the kids do with it? They join the country club. They buy a new boat. They go on a cruise, and they see the world. And this is what's happening all over the country. And I'm telling people, look, there's a much better way. You don't have to live like that. Don't live a just-in-case retirement. I want you to join the country club. I want you to go on the cruise. I want you to be happy in retirement, and there's a very simple way to do that. I love it, the just-in-case retirement. Mm-hmm. That is not an efficient way for you to spend your money. And, Tom, definitely one thing that, that, that I, I talk to uh, my clients about is uh, I like to ask them, what do you want to leave behind, and, and who do you want to have spend your money, this money or that money? Which is it? We should have a plan. And if you don't have a plan for who's going to spend your money, then you know what? There's a default plan out there. And often it's the government, the children, or maybe the children's spouse. You know, if things are set up the wrong way, you know, divorce rates are high. You could be in, uh, leaving a, a large nest egg that you never used because you were too afraid to use it. Because of all these risks out there and these fears, the just-in-case retirement that Tom's talking about. And your, your children end up inheriting that. And then there's a divorce. And really... Some stranger has your money and, and is going on on those cruises and you know uh, joining the country club as, as you said, Tom. Uh, so let's move on now. Let's talk about long term care. You know this is a this is a subject that really really important. Uh, I, I, obviously, you know that I'm a big advocate of it. This is one of those things that I believe, even if we put together a pretty solid retirement plan, we're this is one thing if it pops up you know, can devastate a, a, reti- a well-laid retirement plan and, and leave a legacy destitute if it's not, if it's not taken care of. Yeah, what do you say? I say no retirement plan is complete without a plan for long-term care. It's the one thing most people forget about that can wipe out their entire life's work. You know, I had a chapter in the book, uh, 
paychecks and play checks on long-term care, and it's called What's Your Plan? Because I always brag about my plan whenever I do seminars. I say, here's my plan. I never have to go to a nursing home ever. I get to stay in my house till the day I die. The nurse has to come to me. And my favorite part, I get to pick the nurse. <laughs> you know why? Because I got a plan. I've got long-term care insurance with home health care. I get to stay in my house. So when people say, I don't want any of that nursing home insurance, my answer is exactly. This is anti-nursing home insurance. This is stay-at-home insurance. This is stay-in-control insurance. Mm -hmm. And when people say, well, Tom, long-term care insurance is too expensive, here's what I say. If you think long-term care insurance is expensive, you ought to try not having it. That'll wipe Mm -hmm. you out. Justin, I made my parents buy long-term care 16 years ago. They didn't want to. It's too expensive. It's an insurance company ripoff. We'll never need it. I heard every excuse there was. They are now both in assisted living, $10,000 a month. There were many years my dad never made $10,000 a year. $10,000 a month. I cannot imagine their retirement without their long-term care plan. Wow. It's too, it's just too devastating. And, you know, it's not just the financial side. It's also the emotional side. You know, we know I, I, I sometimes, you know, I had a couple uh, uh, what two weeks ago that came into the office and, and I was talking about long-term care and, and very, very uh, normal responses, you know, when I asked them what they, how do they feel about it after they, they explained that they don't have anything there, you know, to no, no, they've got no plan. They say, well, it's too expensive, like the things you said, Tom, that it's, um, you know, it's a facility. Who wants to go to a facility? You know, I'll, I'll just stay at my house. There's no way. And you know what? Um, I've got a younger spouse, and they point to the spouse. This is, this is something that I see quite often. And as that happened, I said, you know, um, his name's Bob. I said, Bob, um, what I want you to do is I want you to, to get out of your chair now, and I want you to lay on the floor there next to the, uh, the, the conference room table. And then Susie, I want you to go over to Bob and pick him up and take him to the bathroom. Mm. They can't do it. There's no way. They can't do they that. can't do it. And if you can't do that when you're 67, no. how the heck are you going to do that when you're 87, right. you know? And what I say is any plan is better than no plan. So if somebody is not going to buy long-term care insurance, then they need to buy a life insurance policy with a big long-term care bucket, or they need to buy an annuity that, that doubles or triples if you need long-term care, or you can buy a deferred income annuity, almost like longevity insurance that kicks in when you turn 80 uh, with a bunch of money, you know, really high payout rates. But I say any plan is better than no plan, but you got to have a plan. And, you know, like you, just as you mentioned, Tom, there are so many ways to solve this issue. That's why working with an independent financial planner that has access to these kinds of solutions, products, and, a, and maybe hopefully a back office team of, of specialists even in this area, which is what we, what we have there at Fort Wealth Management. We're very lucky. We've got a great group behind us, a, a team of annuity specialists, long-term care specialists. We're all independent. So we get to shop the very best products and solutions out there so it's as cheap as possible if you will, for what the benefits are. And it fits with whatever the client needs, not more, not less, but to protect the plans that we put together. It's essential. And like you said, Tom, there's just so many ways to do it. And I'll tell you, you're not going to find this stuff on Google. It doesn't exist because many just as a, and I say this, I said this before, as a practical matter, many of your very best options out there for putting together a solid retirement plan are just simply concealed from you by the nature of the system. The nature of the system, licensing, independent, not independent, captive agents, right? You know, there's a variety of professionals out there that may or may not be able to assist you, but you got to know that those options do exist and you've got to look and, and, and find the right fit, find those professionals that can help you and get this stuff taken care of rather than sticking our heads in the sand and saying, it's not going to happen to me. My wife's going to take care of me. Uh, I, I'm just going to have enough assets there to be able to, to, to self-insure uh, and really not fully understanding how easy it is maybe or how inexpensive in a lot of cases what I've found actually much less expensive than what a, a lot of people have thought. Yeah, Justin, I love this one. You know, they, they say my, my long-term care plan's hanging in the rack of that pickup truck right there and they got a gun rack and oh, they're going to kill I, themselves. And I say, I say, you know what? The nursing homes are overflowing with people who are going to kill themselves. You know why? Because they all forget. They all forget. <laughs> 
<laughs> you, might, you might need help. We know you. <laughs> well, I won't. I won't make any more jokes along, along those lines. But I'm sure you, you you can fill in the blanks. But I do. I do get that as a, as a possible solution, and that's not a solution that that I like to go with. So I think we should maybe explore other options first. But you know what? We've got some more steps here, Tom. And I want you to hang with us. We're going to go to break here real quick. We'll be right back. I want to talk about home equity, how to tap that wisely, and some other very important things that that our listeners need to understand. And uh, again, this is Justin, Retirement Journey Talk 1370, you're listening to Retirement Journey with Justin Fort, where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom you need to live life your way all the way. I'm Justin, and I'm here in studio with my sidekick, executive assistant by day, Jennifer. (laughs) Hello. And you can call us live at 512-390-1370 or send us your questions and comments to ask at fortwm.com. We're talking about seven steps that you can take uh, to take control of your retirement planning, how to do that. We're visiting with Tom Hegna, author of Don't Retire, ha- uh, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, Seven Steps to a Secure Retirement. And uh, you can visit him at TomHegna.com as well. And Tom, we're back. We're going to talk about the seventh step. We've gone through uh, financial professional, you know, using a financial professional. We've talked about the, the second step, Social Security maximization. We briefly there. Uh, third step, hybrid retirement what that means, working a little bit longer, part-time work. We talked about step four, protect portfolios from inflation. How do we do that? Can we do that with more income? Can we do it with an income ladder, which is a, an interesting concept I think a lot of folks have not thought about. And then number five, how do we guarantee lifetime income? Do we, you know, obviously we've got Social Security, pensions, annuities from, from insurance companies. Uh, and then, of course, long-term care, the, 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 big, uh, the big one that a lot of people don't want to face that could really devastate any retirement plan. So now we're on seven, home equity. Yeah, you talked about use home equity wisely. Are there ways to use the home equity? Yeah, so there's three pretty simple ways. Uh, number one is probably the most common, sell the house and downsize and you know move to Arizona or Florida or Texas. So I guess you're <laughs> in Texas. So, but um, some people need to know is that if you're single, you can capture up to $250,000 of capital gains tax-free. If you're married, you can capture up to $500,000 capital gains tax-free, and that can really help a retirement. The second way is to take a, take a home equity line of credit or home ec- a loan on your home equity. And the third is a reverse mortgage. And the way I come down on reverse mortgages, both on the TV show and the book, is I say I'm not for reverse mortgages. I'm not against reverse mortgages. For some people, they've been a miracle. For some people, they've been a nightmare. My advice is be careful. Work with a trusted financial professional who knows reverse mortgages. I will say that just in the last few years, reverse mortgages have changed a lot. There are now things like lines of credit that you can get that have guaranteed uh, increases every year, and those are very interesting in the use of retirement but you know like if you and your spouse swear that you will live and die in that house you know you can do a reverse mortgage it'll increase the income for the rest of your life and it may may reduce your legacy but if you're okay with that that's fine but here's the problem sometimes things change people get sick people die and if 20 years later you know you want to move to arizona to be near the grandkids you may not be able to do that so i say just be very careful before you do something like that big big decision a reverse mortgage mm-hmm. not that it's uh it, it's bad or good it's just got to be thought about and really spe- you know taken care of uh, for the particular individual like you're saying tom and that's that's definitely the the, the kind of advice that I, that I give to people that ask me about it but i have i've heard more and more questions had more and more questions posed to me about reverse mortgages and how to tap that equity. So thank you very much for, for telling us uh, uh, about some of those uh, things related to how we can use our home equity wisely. Um, now, let's talk about your book. How, how can we get a copy of your book, Don't Worry, Retire Happy, The Seven Steps to a Secure Retirement? Yeah, so multiple ways, you know, TomHagna.com. There's, we have another consumer website, RetireHappyNow.com. It's available on Amazon.com. So, I mean, there's lots of ways to get a copy. There's also DVDs of the TV show if they want, audiobooks if they prefer to listen in the car. 
Um, but let me let me just hit one more thing, uh, Justin, on this happy factor, because I think it's so important that people understand how income relates to happiness. You yes. know, uh, the Wall Street Journal had an article, and, and the headline read, um, the secret to a happy retirement is friends, neighbors, and a fixed annuity. And they discussed that the happiest people in retirement are the people who are surrounded by their friends, surrounded by their families, who have guaranteed paychecks for life. Time Magazine did a study in Great Britain where it said lifetime income stream key to retirement happiness. And if people still don't believe me, they can Google Towers Watson annuities and retirement happiness because they did a whole white paper and you could download it for free. And they looked at all retirees, old retirees, young retirees, rich retirees, poor retirees. You know what they found? All retirees were happier if they had guaranteed lifetime income. Hmm. There's definitely a lot of confusion about annuities. They're definitely a hot button. And, and from the, the work that I've done and the things that I know, I know that online there's there's a, kind of a mini war going on between, uh, you know, maybe insurance side people and Wall Street t- side people. You know, it's, are stocks better or this better? But you know what? When it comes down to getting the job done as a financial planner, that's what matters to me. I want to make sure that you get what you want, whatever your wishes are. If it's to spend all of your money and at the same time not run out, but basically you know, have no assets left over, we can show you how to do that. If you want to leave a legacy, but still have a, a, a guaranteed source of income, maybe have a nice income floor that you can't outlive and spend a lot that way, but maybe use life insurance uh, as a vehicle, we can visit about that. So whatever it is, it, just know that we're independent. We don't care which companies we, we use, as long as they're strong and A-rated. A-rated. But you know, credit rating is important with insurance companies. There's always there's always pros and cons to any decision you make. No decision in itself will have its own pros and cons. A decision will have its own pros and cons. Using an annuity has its own pros and cons. Using the stock market has its own pros and cons. What do those pros and cons mean to you? You know, how, what is your risk tolerance? What is your spending level? Who do you want to have spend your money? Are you, you know, like we talked about, Tom? We want to make sure that the folks that we're working with aren't going to have a just-in-case retirement where they're effectively living in a cubby hole, right, like a, like a hermit or something, not doing anything, even though they have the assets to do it, and then potentially dying and leaving all of that legacy to someone else to spend and, and you know, going to the golf course and all that. So we don't want, we definitely don't want, uh, want that. So we, well, happiness is, is definitely what we're all after in this life, I would, I would argue. Stock markets, annuities, life insurance, these things are just a means to an end. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, and and I, I here's an interesting take on it. I tell people, uh, if you think about it, your assets are simply numbers on a piece of paper. Think about it. Your assets are numbers on a piece of paper. And for the rest of your life, you're only ever going to do two things with those numbers. You are either going to spend that money or you're going to give that money. You're either going to give it when you're alive or you're going to give it when you die. And so when you really study the math and science behind a successful retirement, it comes down to this. Where where can I go to get the most amount of income that I can spend and spend and spend and spend and spend and never run out? And where where what's the most efficient way for me to give money to others? And what you're going to find, the most efficient way to get the most amount of income to, that you can spend and spend and spend and spend and spend and never run out is going to be some form of an annuity. And the most efficient way for you to give money to others is going to be some form of life insurance. And again, these are this is math and science. It's not opinions. And, and I go into depth in that in the book. And, and so if you really read the book, you're going to find out how to retire the optimal way and, and be happy and worry-free. And that's what I think retirement should be. And Tom, can you tell us again when uh, you will be airing your new public television special, Don't Worry, Retire yeah. Happy? It's airing right now. So oh. it's on public television. It's on different stations at different times, and I, I don't get very good visibility on it. Okay. If it's not on your station, you can feel free to call the station and say, hey, we need to get Don't Worry, Retire Happy on there. It's on most of them, and it typically plays during their pledge season, which is about once a quarter. Um, but... You know, like I said, they can always get the DVD as well if if they if they really want to see it. Perfect. Best and I'll be live. I'm I do live events all around the country, and and uh, so you know, look look for look for um, some advertisements on that as well. Well, we thank you for your words of wisdom, Tom, and your expertise, and and the time that you've spent being here uh, with us on the retirement journey. Do you have any parting thoughts? Yeah, and just I you know, we you got a you got a great financial professional running this radio show, so you know, I'd say. If, if you got any questions, sit down with somebody who you can trust and, and put together a plan and uh, set yourself up with a worry-free retirement. It is not that complicated. 
Thank you, Tom. That's Tom Hagna again, author of Don't Worry, Retire Happy, Seven Steps to a Secure Retirement. You can visit him at TomHagna.com. And Tom, we look forward to having you on the show in the future. If you'd be willing, we'd love to have you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. And have a great rest of the weekend. Yeah. Happy Father's right, Day. Happy you. Father's Day again. Thanks, Tom. Yep. Thank you. Okay. So now we're going to we're going to switch gears. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, some news and views uh, that we've got. I, I really want to talk about uh, Roth 401k. Are you missing out on the benefits of Roth 401k? When we get back from this break, I'm going to talk a little bit about Roth 401ks, what you need to know about it versus the traditional 401k that you may be or may not be participating in uh, there at work. Again, this is Justin, Retirement Journey Talk 1370. Pretty soon I'm singing do, 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 Looking out my back door Talk 1370, you're listening to Retirement Journey with Justin Fort Where it's all about the health, wealth, and freedom You need to live life your way, all the way And we're in our news and views segment. I'm going to reference this Bloomberg business article written by Ben Steverman entitled, Are You Missing Out on the Roth 401k? You know, this is a a really good article. Uh, I'd suggest you go uh, look it up if you can find it. If not, give us a call um, or uh, come in the office. I'll I'll, uh, share this information with you. It says that uh, more and more workers have a choice in the retirement plan, which we know is true, to put their savings in a traditional 401k or a Roth 401k. Which what, is it? And what's the difference? What's the difference? That's a good question. Are you asking me, Jennifer? I am. <laughs> <laughs> so a 401k, um, many people are familiar with that, the traditional 401k, where you put money in, you don't pay taxes on it today, mm-hmm. it grows in whatever investments you've got inside your employer plan until you withdraw it. And hopefully you withdraw it after 59 and a half right? Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, unless you've separated from that employer, you can withdraw it sooner in some cases without any IRS penalties, that 10% excise penalty. But effectively, it grows uh, tax deferred. And so when you take it out in retirement, you're going to pay taxes on it. Well, because most people earn more income while they're working than while they're retired, their tax brackets tend to be higher. So the the 401k is a very traditional, uh, obvious choice. However, there is a need for tax-free money in the future. And so uh, in some cases, uh, you can you, you talk to your employer. Many employers offer it now. You know, According to this, uh, ni- 1,900 employers offering 401k plans through Vanguard Group, 56% give employees access to a Roth 401k. Well, this is where you pay taxes ahead of time, right away, so you're not going to get the tax break today. But any growth and gains and all the growth and gains from then on, when you take it out in retirement, are tax-free forever. And that could be a very powerful tool. But, you know, to know which, which one, how much, that really takes uh, a lot of thinking, calculation, and, and you probably you will want to work with a financial professional on this one. Don't take anyone's opinion. Don't talk to your neighbor about it, really. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I mean, you can, but good luck. <laughs> really, you should you feel free to visit with us. Give us a call at 512-433-6492. If you've got an option at work there for Roth 401k and you're debating how much to, and you can split between the two, just FYI. So you can do a little bit here, a little bit there. So you can or, yeah, or you can just go all with one or the other. It really depends on your outlook and your retirement plan. You got to have a retirement plan to know which to use and how much. So just just making that point about uh, the Roth 401k, great vehicle. Just need to make sure you understand uh, the implications there for you tax wise. Uh, so we've got a seminar coming up uh, we next do. week, right? Uh, yes, next week. So Tuesday the 23rd and Thursday the 25th at Steiner Ranch. Um, you can register uh, or RSVP 800-769-1614 or even go to our website at fortwm.com. Go to our events page and you will find it there to register. Awesome. It looks like the Tuesday is uh, pretty full so far. Yep. Thursday it looks like we ha- still have some room. So. Uh, make sure you you give us a call there, and we'll be more than happy to see you. I'll, I'll you know shake your hand when you come in. We'll you'll be able to ask me questions uh, after the seminar. We're going to have a really good educational meeting. We're going to be visiting about Social Security again. So, uh, just to uh, switch gears next week, uh, same time, same channel, twelve thirty uh, here at Talk thirteen seventy. We're going to be talking about wills and trusts. 
uh, some of these tools uh, that, which are commonly used to efficiently transfer wealth amongst generations. What are they? How do you use them? Are they important to you? Perhaps the most important yet least understood relationship in wealth transfer is that between the family and the estate fiduciaries. This is where people really get tripped up. And this is where we want to make sure that we've got uh, maybe a good estate planning attorney we're working with. And we've got some that we do work with and we can help you with if you're looking for someone along those lines, if you need a will updated, things of that nature. Well, Stephen Markin next week, author of Trustee Handbook, will address this all important relationship and he'll show how common mistakes in the wealth transfer process can be avoided and awaken the imagination through client case stories which show how a properly uh, properly structured estate plan uh, can positively transform the lives of its intended recipients. Ultimately, this can serve as a platform for personal fulfillment and lasting legacy. We want you and your family and the generations that, that, that come after you to benefit from your wise choices and your wise decisions. We want to be able to help you make those wise decisions and wise choices as fiduciaries, we, we have your best interests first. Give us a call at our office again uh, or visit us online. Thank you very much for uh, uh, to Tom Hegna for coming on the show, Matt Alvarez, our producer today. And thank you most importantly for listening and tuning into the retirement journey here uh, and sharing this information with your friends and family, visiting our website. We've got podcasts there listed. Uh, we're growing by leaps and bounds. You can like us on Facebook again. Uh, that's Retirement Journey. And we will see you next week. Again, this is Justin, Retirement Journey Talk 1370.